Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Postales webinars. Oh, Hi, Nish. Great. How is everything? You're sitting in front of a lion. In front of a lion. <laughs> Only the problem is the light is slightly low over here. That's fine. Uh, you, need, you need to get a uh, ring light over there. To brighten up. <laughs> yes. I'm so happy because, you know, I've been thinking about doing this um, aerial photography after seeing some spectacular images from Gooch, as always, especially from this part of the world. And he himself is going to give a talk on this. That's awesome. And which always, always is an inspiration and uh, a person yeah. who understands the pulse of uh, Kenya and talking from a different perspective. So all together, yes. it's going to be an amazing, amazing session. Yeah, we have already introduced Gush on the uh, low angle photography. Yeah, so now we are and putting on a... He's, he's an Ace Wildlife Award winning photographer who no more needs an introduction to uh, yeah the, to the let, let let's button. add him directly on the screen yeah hello hey hi guys hey. how are you doing hey good, good. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you guys again yeah I, i'm still Stay laughing because we've had some jokes behind the scenes and we'll leave them behind <laughs> the scenes to be honest yeah <laughs> Uh, it's especially to do with Nisha, but we'll keep that to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we'll continue the talk after. <laughs> after kicking Absolutely. her out of the screen. Guys are always done. Hopefully, we'll also make sure it's private. Yeah? It's no longer being streamed yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so great yes. to be here again with you guys. Thank you very much for bringing yeah. me on again. Yeah. So how how is it going? Your photography during the <laughs> COVID days? It's uh, to be honest with you, I've never been as busy as I have been now. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah. So um, I, I don't know if you noticed the other day. I was uh, asked by all Pajeta to come in and do some photography for them with regards yeah. to black rhinos. And when they said, Gooch, we want black rhino photos, and <laughs> at the same time said, uh, is a weekend enough? You know, already I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, black rhino photos in a weekend? Whoops. <laughs> but um, they, they had some, they had a really amazing guide they gave me who does all the statistics and puts all that information together, knows their territories, knows their behaviors which was the biggest key. And, you, you know, once you know that this is a relaxed rhino and this is a very aggressive rhino, you know how to deal with it. And yeah, uh, I was, let me get into the camera, this close to losing my buggy. <laughs> this close to losing my buggy this time around. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, the the rhino went for it, and then obviously the buggy didn't move, so I don't know what oh, happened. But <laughs> this close, it came, it sniffed it, it had it relaxed, then it relaxed with it. Then after a while, I was able to carry on, and then again, uh, the car was pretty lucky as well because we got a few charges to the car as well. Yeah, because I think they're very they recognize the green Land Cruisers and they don't recognize the silver Land Rover, so. <laughs> <laughs> We managed to solve it. It got it worked out in the end, and it was it was a it was a nice time we had. We even got a chance to go and see the Northern Whites. That's the first oh. time I'd gone to see the Northern Whites, and okay. I think that's a feeling that uh, you can't really, I don't know, you can't put it because you're looking at the last two. Yeah, that might be or might not be. We don't know yet, but those are the last two, and fingers crossed that they can do something. It was that was overwhelming in many ways. Yeah. In any any ray of hope you see? I I really hope so. They're really really working hard, and I okay. hope that they can get something done. And unfortunately, I was a bit tied up. I couldn't watch the whole event. But okay. I know there was an update of it on the event, and I just need to sit back and uh, watch the mm -hmm. watch the event again. And same with the Angama one. Thank uh, Nisha. Well done with the greatest Masai Mara. I think you're finally free for a month before you start judging in. <laughs> fe oh, sorry, yeah, you're free till end of Jan. Yeah, then you start again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, she's laughing. Eh? She's just Nish, nodding her head. She's Nish, nodding her head. I'm looking, though, I'm looking at her on this side. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah it, uh, it uh, you know being being in mara and going through all this process plus the magazine we had a magazine going live today so my days last one week i think maybe every day i'll be sleeping 2 to 3 hours tomorrow afternoon <laughs> i'm going to take a break and sleep <laughs> hey. tomorrow that's my plan Well, you should give Hermes the excuse that the internet is very poor. <laughs> I'm going to go and do something, Hermes. I'm leaving this to you. Bye. No, the, the good thing is I can always call John and tell him to <laughs> <laughs> make sure Nisha gets good network, or move, or, or, or take her to Talek, or take her to Sekanani. Yeah, she must get good signal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I uh, hear the good part is so far, but it's start to rain, so I'm not sure to what extent it is going to be good. Uh, but right now, it's start to rain. I heard that as well. I was talking to some of the guys, and they were saying that it's. Oh no, I spoke to Adam, and he was telling me just to, today. I had a chat with Adam, and he was telling me that it's raining across there, and. Yeah. Uh, as I was discussing with you guys earlier, that this time I'm going to do a shorter December trip tomorrow. Normally I do a longer trip, and this time I'm spending more time with Samburu. Uh, I want to do more of you know these sort of um, Somali ostrich, gravy zebra, uh, Gerenuk if possible. I'm going to try low level with them, and um, the hardest of all, that something I have never done. I'm going to try people photography, or should I say? <laughs> Tribal photograph, tribal people photography this time around. Yeah, that's something I haven't done. Uh, I have finally invested in a Godox flash and a beauty dish and <laughs> <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. I know you're wondering, rolling eyes, thinking what's going on, but it's something that I've. You, you know what? When you keep doing the same thing over and over, you kind of get tired and bored, and it becomes. I want to just try and fresh and try and do something different. If I fail, nothing is going to change. I am still yeah. where I am. But if it yeah. works out, why not? Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that, that's that, that's the thing. You know, I've I've always thought that um, I want to try and do something fancy. You know, try and do massage with the ass Milky Way. But every time I get to Mara in December, the Milky Way is not there because that's not the season for it. Yeah. And then it never gets done. Or we go out on game drives, we come back so tired, and you go and think about picking up your camera again. Nah, <laughs> yeah, this is time for editing and dinner. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Forget editing. I'm. It's my thirteenth or fourteenth day. I don't know. I didn't even check my images. I see two images, and I keep it for the daily talk. And the rest of the things, I really need to see it. What, what happens if half the images are black? <laughs> what else? <laughs> Nothing else. Oh, sorry, did I say that out yeah. loud? Did I say that out loud? Go, go, you know what she'll do? She'll now after the no, session, she'll go and check everything. So so, 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 I believe I have a Z6 Mark II or version two with me that will soon or later come to you. Maybe, maybe not. Do you want to leave the? Do you want me to leave the memory card with photos on it? <laughs> that would be really helpful. <laughs> I'm really waiting for it. I, uh, I was telling the guys over here, I'm going to get a new baby soon from, and it's right now with Gucci. I'm hoping to get it soon any time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking I about. I don't have any baby with me. <laughs> no, baby, what? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> People are going to kick us. We better start with <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so and, I, I was telling Hermes as well. I'm using the webcam utility on the Z7, mm -hmm. and it's working really well. I'm quite impressed. It's, I, I don't know if how you guys can see. I think it's also internet dependent, but it looks really good. Yeah, on it's, it's 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 amazing clarity you uh, we are getting. Yeah, Nikon like, Nikon cameras are just yeah. These Sony people, I don't know what they're doing, but Nikon cameras. I'm only joking. <laughs> only joking. I, yeah. I I need I need to ask Nikon to give me a C7. <laughs> <laughs> is it C7 Mark II or Mark I? Um, I was speaking to the guys at Nikon. Uh, cause of what I'm going to try and do in December, 
they're going to try and get a Z7 Mark II across to me as well. So I think when the Z7 Mark II comes, then I think I'll probably, I wouldn't be mean and hold all the cameras. I'll release the Z6 Mark II, yeah? Yeah. If, if they have, it's, it's, if they, if they have I'll, I'll, I'll take uh, it along with me. <laughs> <laughs> we owe, who, you, who, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they told but, me that I'll take it in 10 days, so I'm waiting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's another one. I don't know. <laughs> the, and, the, the and bad part at the moment is it's uh, the files don't open in Lightroom. So either you'll have to work with Capture One or at the moment, I'm just looking at the JPEGs. And so far, so good. They're impressive. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and Nish, uh, Gucci will be there for the new year in Mara. That's yes. great. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we can. Uh, I'm, I'm staying at Mara Bush Camp. Sorry, should I have not said that on, in, on everywhere for everyone <laughs> to know? But uh, I, I'm going to be there. Yes, uh, I'm spending a lot more time in Samburu this year. Uh, looking forward to that. And then I'll come via all Pajeta Lake Nakuru across to Mara. And uh, let's see. Let's go and have fun. And uh, if it's still raining. <laughs> Good luck, yeah. <laughs> Let's catch up. Let's catch up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good luck, yeah. You know, I, I know um, last year I was in, in the Mara with the rains and it was difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I was at Malaika camp uh, where you guys usually are and I wanted to go across the road to a camp just two kilometers down the river but on the opposite side. We end up having to do a hundred kilometer round trip to get there. There was so much rain. We couldn't cross the rivers. We just had to go with a big loop. So um, let's see because... Uh, Paradise Plains are always beautiful, and uh, the camp I'm going to be is on that side. So, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, 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 fingers crossed. We'll we'll try out. Yeah, that's sort of Kaboso Bahati. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, what's Bahati's daughter called? Um, Bella too. Bella. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's sort of that sort of region. So, and uh, you get you guys are obviously in Lorian and Luluka yeah, territory. Yeah. Today we saw Golden Boy in the same area, so yeah, it's quite active. So, did the photos come out black? <laughs> so, no, why? Just checking. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous already. Yeah, damn it! They're getting to see leopards, and here I am sitting at the office looking at CNC machines cutting metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Let's, cool. let's ready when you guys. Do we go for it? Yeah, yeah, let's start it. Yeah. Okay, let's cool. start it. Yeah, we are getting some messages. Okay, <laughs> hurry up. Yeah, stop chatting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I'm getting some messages as well. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm getting the same thing. People are watching. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, screen share. It's on sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, guys, we're going to be talking about uh, aerial photography today. I'm not going to give an introduction about myself. I think most of you already know me. And if you don't know me, uh, you can check out my website. There's a bit of a story about it uh, there. You can check out some of the photos up on the website as well. And um, social media pages as well, which you've probably picked up from Pause Trails or myself. And this year, compared to most of my years where I have spent more time photographing flamingos, formations, shapes um, in Lake Magadi or any of the other lakes that we've been photographing, this year I spent a lot of time on the helicopter trying to photograph animals. I did a lot of trips to Mara, and here are some of the results of the trips to Mara. And, you, you know, uh, an island in the middle of, uh, a middle of the river. This is on the Mara River itself. We've got oh, Hippo Island, basically, and beautiful, beautiful scenes. Uh, I know I'll keep saying beautiful so many times, you'll probably get tired of hearing it today. But uh, <laughs> by all means, please butt in and let's change the topic from beautiful to something else and let's talk about some photographic conversation at the same time. Uh, the EXIF data, for those of you, if you can see it on the top left hand side, uh, usually you'll find that most of the EXIF data will be on high speed or 1-1000 upwards. Uh, the reason for that is the vibration of the chopper. When If you're not 
the, the, the chopper is vibrating so much that if you're not using high shutter speeds, chances of getting sharpness are really poor. Even uh, I'll try and recommend that you even pick up the ISO, sorry, sorry, not the ISO, the aperture slightly. So rather than shooting at a f2.8 or f3.2, try and shoot at f6.3, uh, 7.1, f8, somewhere around there, unless you want to be creative and you're trying something different. Yeah. But the, the bigger part with this is all is the, the trouble with uh, aerial photography is that the landscape you, you know, like when you're down on the ground, you can see all the contours, you can see everything in the landscape. But then when you come up to the aerial side of things is anything that was a big hill when you're down there, when you come up here, it's just flat. You, you, you know, the, the grass here, you can see the shadows of the grass in the center. Let me use my mouse so you can see the grass here in the center. And it's got decent enough shadows. But I tell you, if you were low down, this would be pretty tall. But from above, from the helicopter, you don't see much. So the, the idea with a lot of this is that we, we we're going to try and f form shapes and, you know, two giraffes. And which better way to tell they're two giraffes by the shadows is the only way you can tell two giraffes. If you're right above, unless you really saw the patterns in detail, you wouldn't know if they're giraffes. Um, a lot of people, question always comes is, don't animals get scared or um, they're not scared of giraffes? And we did about four turns to get this shot, or we looped around these giraffes around four times to get this shot. And at each and every time, it wasn't an issue. These guys didn't, they, they were so comfortable with the chopper, they didn't care. I, and we've also noticed that sometimes it's animal dependent one giraffe might be scared the other giraffe doesn't care so it's just experience of the animals how they want to do this yeah similar sort of scenario again giraffes shadow look at this guy he had his uh, legs apart because he was licking the salt uh, in the soil the sodium in the soil here and he couldn't care we flew over him a couple of times we looped around him he wasn't bothered yeah but what just to give you an example uh, we, we we went from, if you can look, this is a 200 millimeter, so we were pretty high. Yeah, but 200 millimeter on a giraffe <laughs> yeah. at this distance wouldn't be that. So we were going up and down. We started off with high. We made our way lower and lower and lower as we were looping down to get to it. We spiraled and he, he was happy. And the groups around him were pretty happy as well. Mm -hmm. um, these two, it was like they were on a cheeky honeymoon. They were hiding away from everyone. Look at their positions. Yeah, one facing this way, one lion facing the other way, a lion and a lioness, and it was like they're really, you know, like a little young couple hiding away from their parents and having a little session on the side. Yeah, and literally, you know, as soon as we got there, and they were both like, "Whoops, who's come? Who's come? Who's come? Who's looking at us?" Yeah. Um, but, you know, chilled out. Um, at this point, yes, they are looking at us. Uh, sometimes lions, these guys were young. They were a bit more wary. The older ones sometimes even ignore the chopper. But as I said to you, you know, it's very animal dependent. It's very particular to the individual rather than uh, you could say, oh, all zebras are going to be afraid and all wildebeest are going to be afraid. It's very, very individual dependent because some do care, some don't care. So, so just you know like how when on a game drive <clears throat> excuse me when you're on a game drive and you drive up to some zebras some run away from you yeah. some just chill out it's very much individual based so nothing to worry about we're not out there and i know you guys you know me and uh scaring animals isn't part of my process and it's not part of my intention and we're going to make sure that it is the way it will be in the future as well yeah um, here is probably one of the most amazing shots that I have had. And su surprisingly not, it's not mine. <laughs> it belongs to my son who, when he took this shot, he was nine years old. Yeah, and you, you, you know, just more testament to if you're at the right place, aim the camera, fire, you can still get something beautiful. 
you doesn't have to be you don't have to have so much practice you know he has hardly got any practice i thought he maybe listens to me more about photography and things like that but it's a guy who just aims and fires doesn't know much about settings the setting of 11600 i had set because while we were on the chopper we were swapping between cameras if i wanted to use my uh in, my 70 to 200 i'll take it from him and say okay look give me the 70 to 200 you use the 2470 and we'd keep swapping like that and he was up there with me first trip for him first trip for me and here you go yeah so guys you know don't worry about it we'll always um what i've been doing these days is i've been going out with guys and we spend uh the evening before discussing what settings how to do what's going to happen because don't get me wrong but things move so fast on the chopper obviously you know you're you're trying to go around in circles everything is moving so fast the speed on a helicopter is on a game drive is way higher than you'll have a speed of a car so everything is moving so fast and then the other part that is really difficult is that it's very noisy up in the chopper. And when we have the doors off with the wind blowing, it's sometimes difficult to communicate because uh, the mics are getting wind on them and it, it becomes a bit difficult to communicate. And uh, you, 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 you know, uh, we'll do everything, we'll prepare the groundwork. So at least when you're going up in the chopper, you're not thrown in the deep end. You've got a bit of an estimate or preparation of what's happening. So that's what I've been doing this year with everybody who I've mm -hmm. been flying with. And yeah, we, we did a lot. Um, I was, uh, we, we were offering helicopter safaris as an incentive to raise money for Mara Elephant Project. And I think the first month of running this, we raised around six to seven thousand dollars. It worked really, really well. It was beautiful, and thank you very much to Mara Elephant Project. And I'm glad to say that I did my bit while I enjoyed at the same time. <laughs> yeah, two two birds with one stone. <laughs> So uh, next shot, this was um, sort of uh, migration season a couple of years ago uh, on the just on the border between Kenya and Tanzania where the fires, you know, they, they burned the grass to try and get the grass so nice. Uh, what was so beautiful about this place is it left a little patch that looks like a heart. And this is the reason I took this shot. We flew over it a couple of times just so that I could get the right angle for everything for this shot. And you've got one side where it's sort of green and a little bit of dryness. The other side where it's burning and it's leaving patches behind. And, you know, what more representation of a beautiful, beautiful heart. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, th this is what I was telling you about lions. You could fly over them, loop around them. These two lionesses didn't even look up. They didn't care whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> we looped, we sort of went into a spiral loop coming down and these guys couldn't care less. Yeah. Uh, a big thing I like to do from Ariel is shadows. And, you know, it's very representative of the animal because I'd like to be vertically above if, if it's a side shot, I can get that on ground. I'd rather do something that you can't get off the ground. So you're always trying. This is a sort of vertical shot, a uh, very high shutter speed. I could have reduced it to drop down the ISO. It was my first time on a chopper when I got this shot. And s same with uh, most of these shots. These were all the first time I flew. Yeah. And, you know, just talking about it's prepare yourself, think about the shots you want to get. Uh, same thing, if you're coming to Kenya, you want to go somewhere, go and look at other people's photography, um, see what they've done, see what's capable of the area. Um, uh, go and prepare a lot of shots in your head and then come and take them. And, you, you know, this this is what I got a wildebeest crossing, or should I say a migration crossing from the helicopter, which, again, I got this year when we had gone out there, which was nice. Yeah, but wow. this was a small group. Yeah, uh, we went out too late. I didn't real didn't learn this the first time. Um, we were trying to aim for sunset, but in a helicopter, because of the vibrations, uh, you're trying to keep the 
shutter speed quite high to get sharpness and a little bit and obviously the consequence of that is the ISO goes up as well so these days we try and target five o'clock rather than six o'clock because they're still light we've still got shadows or let's target 7 30 onwards in the morning because at that time the sun is more brighter and the shadows are still long it really works mm -hmm. yeah and here so this shot is probably taken two or the same second as the one my son took that's how we worked it out that he took it because i remember taking this shot whereas when i look back at the time the two of them were about one second apart and there's no way i could have dropped a camera and picked up another one and taken it within a second so you know but this shot uh, was actually uh, even he's even this one was uh, when I say he's good uh, my sons and this one was also converted into a a beautiful scarf by Mia Cora. Yeah, it's called Flying Pink Love and it makes this amazing scarf. Honestly, um, there's a new collection out by the way. Uh, again, everything to do with Magadi, nothing else, just Magadi, <laughs> just animals <laughs> and just birds. Yeah. Oops, sorry, this has come back in. Uh, I don't know why it's come twice, but I'll jump over it. Here's another shot, you know, just flamingos running across the water and flying off. Then you've got the algae at the bottom. Yeah, you've got the algae yeah. across here. And then you've got the best part about Magadi is all you have to do is underexpose your shot. So what I'll do is I'll go into my exposure compensation, maybe minus one, minus two, minus 2.3 or minus 1.6. And it'll give you the most darkest, blackest water rather than, and also it's better to shoot underexposed because in this case, as you can see, is, uh, the, the flamingos are very bright. They get overexposed. So when you try and underexpose, it's a better way to do it. Yeah. So there's also 7200. Uh, I believe, I believe maybe 2470. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. Twenty four seventy or seventy to two hundred. It doesn't really. It's still at seventy millimeter. Yeah. So it's somewhere there. Again, the algae on the water. This is the stuff the flamingos come for, and you can see one flamingo. You can see the reflection of the clouds on the water. Yeah. You, you know, being up here, it's not around picking that detail on the bird. It's trying to pick up all the. It's it's trying to pick up composition. It's trying to build. So, uh, it's hard to explain sometimes, but you know, you're trying to pick up a group of animals and you're trying to build something. We've got a little island here in the middle, and again, the flamingos all just chilling out. There's a little dead tree in the center because of the island, and you can see the flamingos kind of going around the dead tree and. You know, so I, I, I sometimes uh, when, when when I don't have more photos to look at, I might most of the time go back to these aerial shots and just try and build the stories around this, try and work out, you know, how beautiful it is. Because a, a lot of times when you're up there, you don't get the time to understand what you're shooting. You just shoot, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and you come back and you're like, oh wow. Oh wow! Oh, look at this shot. Did I take this shot? Yeah. So they're not black shots they are coming out of the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, for, yeah. For those of you who didn't get that, rewind and then you'll watch it from the start. You'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, by the way, yeah. we saw Luluka hunting. Huh? She's, she's trying to rub it in now. Yeah? But it might be a black shot, so I don't know. Yeah, we haven't seen the shot, so she's got nobody no has seen here. the shot. <laughs> <laughs> she's too busy judging competitions there. She doesn't have time for photography and writing magazines. Yeah. <laughs> I need time to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is today you might get a little bit more. Yeah? But we can tell John, I have his number. We'll tell him to wake up later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Leopard, leopard in the camp. Wake up, Nisha. Leopard in the camp. Yeah. <laughs> there was leopard in the camp last, I think, not camp yeah but near, very near oh wow beautiful i i honestly i miss the mara man that's such a beautiful place yeah. I, I think a lot of our friends are here a lot of yeah. our friends 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I actually got a call from Nikon and they said, why are you not in the Mara? Because everyone else seems to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to your Z7, but you're not in the Mara. Yeah? Sorry, Z6, but you're not in the Mara. <laughs> So again, uh, as I was uh, com coming back to this, is um, what I was just trying to say. Same thing is um, reflection. Uh, sorry, shadows. You know, it's an early morning shot, a nice composition, not of the wildebeest from above, but the shadow, the way the tail seems to have lifted up. Like you want to give it a start, you know, like the old cars. Let's start the wildebeest and let it run. You know, wind it up, yeah, and just. It, it looks like it's, I don't know, it's some, you know, s such a boss, you know, I'm the boss and I'm going to give you this position. And that's what I saw when I saw when I saw this shot. That's what I thought about. Yeah. Well, I'm losing words now. Yeah? <laughs> and again, uh, uh, this this is um, the swamp just by observation hill in Amposelli. Again, underexposing the shot, so the water came out so nice and black. We actually had a family of one, two, there's four, five, six, seven, seven of these elephants here, because you can see uh, the mum right at the front that's drinking water. There's a little baby just suckling her, just down there. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the funny part is when they do hear the helicopter, all the kids come close, but you had one on the left-hand side who was quite relaxed, and the moms didn't stop carrying on drinking water. They're still very comfortable drinking water, washing themselves. Uh, yeah, so they, they were enjoying themselves, and this makes such a beautiful, the greens and everything coming back together, it makes a beautiful shot, yeah. Um, hippos in the swamp, yeah, in the green swamp. Uh, we, we actually had this shot printed out and we had it at the exhibition at the yes. Nat Geo event, yes? This was printed yeah. out. It, it looks so beautiful printed out there. It was, thank you guys, it really, really looked nice. Yeah, and, you know, just mom and baby just enjoying swampy waters, favorite hippo place, yeah, yeah. And... Um, now that it's raining, so that means all the rivers have filled up. So you're not s smelling the hippo waters anymore, are you, Nisha? No, no. But it, <laughs> instead of riding, we most of the time we are gliding. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, look. This this is probably a very very simple shot. It's not a tree. It looks like a tree, but it's actually the river in the rainy season. The way it flows. Uh, it's gone through to make up this and this is a route where the motorbikes pass every day yeah so you've got this route across here and the river flowing which has left a little estuary kind of making a sh the shape of a a little tree so nice something different it, it, looking at whatever you can get and then uh back to lake magadi again um, this is yeah beautiful. this yeah exactly this is where the uh, this was the pre-production Z7. I had the pre-production Z7. I wasn't even able to edit these photos in RAW because, again, uh, at that point, Lightroom couldn't hold, uh, work with the Z7. And we got these beautiful, beautiful shots. This is, again, pre-production Z7. I'd taken it up there to go and get some shots. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just one bird. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it still loading? That's probably why. Yeah, I'll, I'll go slowly yeah, just to make sure the computer can keep up with me. <laughs> yeah, jump in. Oh, yeah, this one's still. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Again, a single frame flamingo running across the water, leaving those uh, footsteps behind. Yeah. This, there's one of this, and then there's another one I've got, and I'm not sure if I've added it to the slideshow. But uh, will it show up? Let's see. Yes, I've added it in the slideshow, so we'll talk about it when we get to it. So these sort of shapes, designs of nature, I'm just in love with. I love it. This is the shot I was saying. I love this shot, the shape that oh. as the pelican was swimming, it left this bowel wave behind it. I just love this shot. And underexposed because the white pelican in bright light whereas the water you know they, the the differential between the twos is quite yeah. high so you underexpose maybe go down by 
uh, mi minus as minus two, minus two point three, something like that, and uh, you, you get all this sort of stuff. And here, look at this. The, uh, the oh, yeah, on, on this lake, honestly, when you two come or you're here, let's plan a trip together. We should yeah. go and yeah. do this, yeah. Sure. And yeah, uh, yeah, this at uh, this uh, Lake Magadi, we get a lot of um, soda ash that's mined from this lake, and I believe the soda ash also is what we use for making glass and those sort of things, and it leaves all these colors. And most of the photos are from this lake, and you'll find look, in this case you've got the pinks and the whites and a little bit of orange. And then we had earlier on the greens, yeah. And then we had some browns as well. Uh, in the dry season, it becomes completely red. It's like you're looking at Mars. It's just, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, guys. I think the exposure on this looks a bit funny. I'll review it later. But again, you know, the, the main factor is the shape. It's kind of forming like a G. It's yeah. beautiful. It's, yeah. It's, it's you, you know, so, sometimes I don't think words can do justice to these photos. It's Definitely. just yeah. print, print, put them up, and that will just do justice to them. Okay. One of, uh, there's two okay. shots that I've, I've I had printed. One is, I'm pointing the opposite way. One is this one here, yeah. which you can see and where my finger is pointing, the one behind me. And <laughs> there's a second one that I have printed in my office, and I'll show you guys that okay. one. Oh, here we go. Dry, dry Lake Magadi. So it Whoa. literally is red, and all the the white spots. So should you say these little is where the flamingos come and make their little nests? Yeah, and when they're having or when they're having children. So when they're having their chicks, this is where they sort of chill out. So you've got is that know, small islands? The small islands. That's right. Yeah, the small islands is what they use, and. You know, um, you'll find these amazing cracks that make it look like marble. And yeah, he, he, here's an example. So you, it actually looks like a wildebeest face. I uh, hope you're in agreement of that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It does. Yeah. It does. And then you've got, look, the dry white. You've seen the ground cracking where the water is. It's mixed with red and black. This place and colors, it's just something, cool. something else. And here, look, just the, the cracks forming to make it look like marble, one yeah. flamingo flying across. It's Beautiful. just honestly, it's special. This place is so, so special. Where it's dry, you can see it's going very whitish. Yeah, next time we can take some polish and polish it up so it looks all <laughs> shiny and yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Again, you know, this is prime example of what I love doing. It, it It's just trying to put this together. And just to give you an idea, this was taken at 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh. Yeah. So look at the length of the shadow even yeah. at 4.30. So you don't really need to go all the way down to sunset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These sort of times is just fine on a helicopter and good light so you can work with it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Suguta Valley. This is up north in the Suguta Valley. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some guys sending me messages to do with. Okay. No worries. We'll ignore that. Apologies. Um, yeah. And this place, it's inaccessible by road. There's no roads up here in northern Kenya. And the scenic stuff here was just so beautiful. But, you know, us guys, we are more wildlife photographers. Yeah? We need something to photograph. Yeah? So <laughs> in this case, we, we try to work with this. Yeah? Uh, this is the we, – we, we also have a desert in the north part of Kenya. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's as lovely as the shot is. Unfortunately, I wish I was here more closer towards sunset rather than in the middle of the day. And then, you know, with the shadows on the areas which weren't getting the sun would have looked so much more yeah. better. But, hey, I'm not complaining, you know, when you get to <laughs> sit, you know, you can plan things down to the bottom, but sometimes nothing ever works out. But this is such a, such a beautiful place. 
Yeah, this is still up there, Suguta Valley. I was told that um, this place is very dry, it barely rains. We had rain clouds, we had a little bit of rain. Yeah, unfortunately, if you know me well, everywhere I go, it just rains, yeah. Uh, last year, so um, earlier this year, I went to a place called Chui Lodge. And the day I got there was the first rains of the season, the October season, and it rained. And the next day it rained, and the day after it rained. So whereas I was planning something different, we had to plan with the rain. Huh? So we were interested in photographing leopards. We didn't see any because the rain. Yeah, and we got to see so much more, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys saw the shots. It was with the hyena kill at night. And the steam from the kill was coming out, and we got one of the vehicles to go and give us backlight. And we got these crazy shots. I'll share them with you guys sometime. And some of them have been posted on my social media. Okay. I think one has been posted, but I'll share some with you guys. Yeah. yeah. And what's so amazing about this place is that it's really volcanic. Mm -hmm. And everywhere else, the ground is black except this one rock popping out yeah which is yeah which is different and it's so flat around and there's with one rock and i don't know where it comes from yeah but it's so beautiful out there yeah um this was uh lake logipi in northern kenya Turkana site and you you can see uh the the, the silt that sits on the surface yeah yeah you can see this and then the, it leaves the surface brown but the soil underneath is black so when the flamingos walk and expose the the soil underneath you get these black lines forming yes yeah. yes and, yes yes and, yeah and literally magadi only has this black soil underneath so that's why magadi comes out black yeah whereas this one it comes out with but hey this one gives you textures. You've got browns, you've got black lines forming in between it. You know, it's sometimes I believe it's down to me or to you or to the guy holding the camera to pick up what's there. And sometimes, you know, we drive back and we say, ah, oh, today we didn't find anything. I don't believe that is the case. The case yeah. is that we didn't assume or we didn't find it we yeah. didn't find or we didn't get the formula right to see what nature is showing us correct yeah L look at this you know the lines forming same shot again you know well, I, I call this shot uh, heat seeking oh. missiles so it's like the wow. flamingos are heading off to the <laughs> helicopter yeah. <laughs> yeah and the way they zigzagged between each other all the way to the chopper and it, it, it worked out really well this time beautiful yeah, again, you know, just to show how much there was, how much walking they're doing. You've got the flamingos at the top trying to get out of the frame, but these are all the lines that the whole group had formed and made in between. And it's 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 really something. And when you go and do this, I'm just trying to see what's coming next before just to prepare myself. Have I got the shots? Yes, I have the shots that I'm <laughs> thinking about, yeah. I was telling uh, both of you earlier on that you can practice and you can prepare for every slideshow, as many as you want. But there's always that time, five minutes before, I think I'll add this photo. No, no, <laughs> let me remove this photo. Yeah. So, so a little bit of that has happened today. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Yeah. So this is, so you have uh, Lake Turkana at the back with the blue water. Yeah. And then on the, the one closer to us, which is green. Uh, yeah. You've got the lava from the volcanoes, which is the black stuff that's forming on the side, separating the two. And mm -hmm. then as it gets drier, the lava has these little ponds that are forming in it. And the best part about those ponds is that each pond, because the pH value in it changes, has got a different color. So one content is different. And you can see there's a little bit of a bluish green and a, a yellowish green. And oh, it's just gorgeous out there and here's a better shot of it you can see the different colors yeah, yeah just because of oh, the, wow. the the water levels in it you can see the shadow of the helicopter almost all the middle. shades of green <laughs> yeah we would like to try gray though yeah but we call <laughs> it green <laughs> Yeah. Good Nisha's, Nisha, I think Nisha's network has probably let her down yeah yeah I think so <laughs> yep. 
Uh, th this is a shot um, again from Lake Logipi. You can see the browns of the soil. You've got the green algae mixing up. The underwater, the brown, or should I say the black soil is lifting up with these pelicans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just creating all sorts of shapes and designs. It's just, yeah, you, you know, I, I go there and you start photographing. And by before you know it, you filled up a memory card. And <laughs> these days what I do is I'll take one of those, you know, the photographer's West type jackets. Yeah, yeah. And I'll fill one side up with <laughs> empty... Uh, this this side is all the empty memory cards, and this the other side is all the uh, the full ones, yeah. And you're just <laughs> flicking from one side to the other, like okay, full <laughs> next one, full next one. <laughs> and before you know it, you've come back with three, four thousand photos of oh a one-hour flight, yeah. <laughs> and then you obviously have the task of sitting down and looking through them. And yeah. still, I don't believe that even shots that I've taken maybe one or two years ago, I haven't sat down and gone through all of them. <laughs> I bet there's still stuff there I need to find. Yeah, yeah. Th this is this is so Lake Logipi, early morning. Yeah, uh, I think this was still crisp uh, going through it. This was nine thirty in the morning. Okay. Yeah. And we've got the reflection of the sky. You've got that one mountain in the background. And you've got thousands of flamingos in the foreground. Literally thousands. And dark blue heading off into light blue. Reflections on the water early in the morning. Yeah. It sometimes just is special. Honestly, <laughs> sometimes it's just special. And a, a better shot of the reflections of the mountain. Yeah. Uh, or the little hill, yeah. The vastness of this place is so beautiful. And just, you know, when, when the water level rises even more, you can see all the plains in the back, they all fill up with like a very little layer or maybe two inches, three inches of water just spread all over this place. It's so beautiful. Yeah, uh, Pelicans, um, this, this one was very velvety, brown, yeah, a little bit of everything going on. A couple of uh, the flamingos moving were leaving the ripples behind. Yeah, just again, design something different and yeah. beautiful pelicans to go with it. Um, oh. This was the rainy season in Magadi last year. Um, it was so, so, so wet out there that when the rain was coming, it was bringing all the silt. You can mm -hmm. see the black, yeah. the black of the lake still trying to find its way through, and it's yes. leaving in as the water flows in. It was bringing in these beautiful lines, and honestly, you know, we were trying to see if we can get the flamingos nearby. We managed to get the big group of flamingos to fly over, just to give you a scale of how far we were, how small one of the flamingos looks, and they were all. Um, uh, yeah, th these were the the larger flamingos. They're the the greater flamingo, and they're much much more larger. And the wingspan is so large, but at the same time, you can just tell how vast or how big or how far I'm taking the shot from. Mm. Yeah, again, same thing. You have the lake water on the top. You have this the rainy water coming in, and it's forming these different layers, and it literally looks like steps. Yeah, or and clouds in the ground. In the flamingos in the middle as well. So it's half here, half there. Yeah. The reflection of the sky and the water. So it kind of looks like the cloud. So you know, you're not sure is this a ground shot? What was the <laughs> was it a hill? You know, you're you're still trying to work out what's going on sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Again, same sort of scenario with the rain, the little estuaries form, the rivers sort of bring in all the water, brings in the colors along with it. This place was more purple, orange rather than uh, black on that side. And then this is the shot you use, you know. Yeah. I, I would love to say I've enhanced this as much as I can, but the reality of it was there was oranges, there was blues, there was purples. There were so many colors here that even I couldn't. I, I've not posted this shot because I'm still unsure. <laughs> that uh, did I get the colors right? Did I what? You know. And I look at all the consequent shots of this scene, and they are all the same. And I'm thinking, 
God, no one's going to believe me that there were so many colors <laughs> out there. <laughs> But that's not the reason I go there. I go there to go enjoy myself and push myself to as far as I can get to. And, yeah. you know, some of these are testament. And he, here's a shot again from the helicopter. Uh, it is aerial, but it doesn't look aerial. Um, mm. It is a reflection on the water of the zebra. Uh, I've inverted the shot as I always love to do, especially with my cheetah drinking reflections. <laughs> but the, the original zebra is below and the reflection is at the top. I've got another one in store, which is even nicer, but we'll go through this slowly, slowly. Yeah. Uh, ze zebras running across. Uh, it was really, really wet. So, you know, you can get the shine in the ground because the water is flowing. Yeah, there's a little bit of a level of water. It's muddy. Oh, honestly, this is, and it's just, you, you know, Magadi. This is mainly Magadi. And I think, you know, you, if you go to Magadi as a photographer, you can come back very, very satisfied. Yeah. Uh, another way of taking aerial photography, I'll come to this, but uh, white rhinos, yeah, you look from that angle and you can see they're proper large guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> super large yeah yeah, yeah but um this this was taken at solio yeah we we're above and nice you know just trying to be different and this was a very different idea that i've used i'll share with you guys what i'm trying to do here and here we go this is again a reflection shot wildebeest running across the frame uh i've gone overexposed here to try and get as much of it bright as possible and it worked out really really well um, i'm doing a calendar for 2021 because i was uh -huh. really bored and i tried to do something and all my shots are <laughs> this format you know high key white with a subject through it all 12 months are in this sort of format i've got a lion i've got a leopard i've got a giraffe I've got rhino, I've got this wildebeest in it. It's just 12 months of this sort of stuff. Very minimalistic, um, Great. minimal branding on it, and just dates, that's it. So it's a bit of a table calendar. Uh, I'll share it on my Insta later on. So I'll, I'll get it when I come, when we meet. Absolutely. I'll, actually, yeah. I'll bring some along for you guys. I'll bring yeah. some along for you guys. Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, he... Uh, Crossing. I got a crossing this time with a helicopter. Uh, what we tend not to do is we don't go over the Mara River because Mara River gets very busy with vehicles. Yeah. And the, the last thing I want to do is boom, 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 and chase everything <laughs> or create something. And you, you know, true to its testament is people are never happy, no matter what happens. Yeah. And we, we've seen videos circulating of wildebeest trying to cross a particular camp. Um, they try to get through the camp. But when you go and speak to everybody on the ground, I wasn't there in person. But, you know, we, we spoke to a lot of guides and I spoke to a lot of guides and I said, look, what's going on? What was that story with the camp? And he goes, good, reality of the fact is that the camp definitely isn't a crossing point but they were seen crossing the camp. So why did they cross through the camp? It's because all the vehicles were blocking the crossing point. So the wildebeest oh. had to find another place and they went through the camp. But the videos don't show that. The videos just show the wildebeest trying to go through the camp. So now there's a witch hunt against the camp. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, what we tend to do quite strictly is if there's vehicles around, we'll stay away. We've got... You know, being in a helicopter, you've got availability to so much space. You can be on the other side of Mara in five minutes. Yeah. Whereas in a vehicle, it could take you two to three hours to get to the other side. So we can mm -hmm. just go on the other side. We'll probably fly over Sand River, which is a lot more quieter, or simply go into one of the conservancies, which we're allowed to fly in, which we can do whatever we feel like. We can yeah. fly in through the conservancies, Lemek, Mara North, where... Mara Elephant Project is very, very active. They've got a mm -hmm. helicopter that does a lot of work. And while we are out there, we'll still support Mark in, um, get photos of animals or elephants that they can use for their data counting. If we cross any fences, we'll take photos. So these guys can use the photos for their projects saying, mm -hmm. oh, look, this is what it is. And to be completely honest with you guys, uh, if Mara Elephant Project requests a photo for me, it's not 
for guys i need money for this here you go take it yeah, yeah. any concern any project that's a, a conservation project you want photos here you go um prints for wildlife prints for nature there's a giraffe conservation fund hey just take them if you can raise money by selling them go for it uh all pajeta was exactly the same thing said look guys just give me access to the conservancy let me go there and take some photos i'll enjoy taking the photos you guys can have the photos back and yeah do whatever you want with them and i've taken these many you can choose which ones you want i'll put i'll put them on the table saying here's a few options choose which ones you want and they'll choose yeah and you know i i keep telling this to everybody is when if we don't take care of nature and there is no more nature what are people like us going to photograph correct will will become landscape photographers the whole yeah. world of us yeah or maybe bad weather and maybe we can go into lightning storms and stuff like that yeah so yeah but let's look after nature this is beauty around us and let's not lose it yeah this is one of my favorite favorite shots i don't know if people out there will understand it but you can see the group of hippos on the right hand side yes yeah and literally what the hippos are doing is they've gone through the water and left their excrement or whatever they've left and they've made these shapes for us and <laughs> it literally looks like explosions you know that's what comes out of the back of the hippo anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a nice swampy area you've got the greens you've got the hippos are moving it looks like three mushrooms or two mushrooms or explosions or nuclear explosions <laughs> whatever you want to call them yeah, but it's it's just trying to follow make designs you know trying to be creative when you're out there yeah yeah and yeah look the oh. croc i posted a croc the other day as well but i just wanted to do this one rather than that one for mm -hmm. this place you know you've got this so i think the scale is hard to tell because this is one of those massive mara crocs you know those super large mm. ones that yeah. have probably lived about two centuries or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and taken down every wildebeest that yeah. crossed the crop <laughs> wildebeest and zebras <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. I, I think nisha saw a crossing just the yeah, other yeah. day yeah she said yeah. there were almost 2000 zebras crossing oh wow black photos again i assume huh? <laughs> <laughs> she's not here to defend herself so we might as well make the most of it yeah <laughs> yeah so um going through this yeah we're coming to a close shortly so um just going through it and this is my favorite aerial amazing, shot to make, yeah if you've got the little island you've you've got the algae which has formed up to make this sort of spiral coming through this is the one i've got printed in my office and then you've got the flamingos oh. flying across um uh, when i was in south africa we uh, I, I i did a talk in south africa for steven seagal on uh, the kayalami racing circuit he does a photo expo every year and they get everyone to come in and uh a lot of other photographers to talk about photography so it's everything photography you've got all the manufacturers accessories guys uh you've got all and and they had a place it was uh, a print shop called art of print mm -hmm. and 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 there was they were they were trialing this new paper or this new they had like a matte board and a shiny board a glossy board and we had a discussion and they printed this shot on the glossy board and they use it in their showroom and honestly it looks phenomenal in that paper yeah or whatever that board is or whatever it is it i'll stay away from the technical bits i'll just say the art on that thing looks so 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 beautiful yeah and then finally like i always like to do is oh sorry we've got one more rhino again uh, talking about <laughs> shadows trying yeah. to show that it's a black rhino because it's got the one hump yeah and the question always comes in how do i do it here we are doing the opposite trying to go super low speed to try and create some drama from the helicopter trying to be a bit different while exploring up there and again i i you know you'll all understand that this thing requires a bit of a budget flying on a helicopter requires a bit of a budget um 
normally charges are around a thousand dollars an hour but if you divide that by three passengers or if you want me to be on board you can divide that by two passengers and it's cheaper than a balloon safari to be honest with you but yeah here is we, another we already option. have a, a message from shreya patel uh, one day <laughs> yes I, one day i'm going to do aerial photography with you Gucci. Thank you very much, and that'd be very nice, Shreya. Yeah, we, we we went with her to Nairobi National Park as well, so we did some uh, photography in Nairobi National Park with her as well. So yeah, Ariel, I tried to convince her last time, but she didn't buy it. But then she, <laughs> but but then she bought uh, the print that I've got at the back. She bought one of those. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we'll let her off. We we'll let her <laughs> off now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, just to uh the, the current setup that i'm using for aerial is um if have you used uh have you seen one of these poles that they use for um real estate photography oh uh, yeah yeah so it's one yeah. of those poles that extends up 10 meters yeah yeah and here it is you can see uh oh. my colleague holding it up i'm oh. holding the ipad because we're using a cam ranger so I'm mm -hmm. looking at the the composition from the iPad, and we're moving it around, and we are firing away. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is one of the northern whites. We've got Zach, who was the who's the keeper, and mm -hmm. he's putting some carrots there for the northern white, so we can get the northern white in exactly where we yeah. wanted to. Yeah. I don't bait, but obviously this is uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear, I don't bait, but this is not a this is not a wild rhino. Yeah. This is a uh, should I say it's a very tame rhino? You can walk up to it, you can touch, you can play around, and they're very, very nice. Uh, the, the 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 part that is, you know, when you get there first thing in the morning, they come and they sniff you, and they want to sniff you. They want to make sure who they know who it is. And when they're sniffing you, you know, they're pushing you around, and for them, it's just a little bit of this, and you are like. Shoo! Yeah, yeah, you've been thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just catch me. Just catch me if you see me flying. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was the last shot, and just wanted to talk about this again. Uh, as always, please feel free to ask anything you wish. Yeah, we we in fact got a lot of uh, messages rather than questions about your photography <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much yeah so yeah uh cynthia is saying hello uh ah, yes. from argentina yeah yes uh yes. nice the macro Fias, photographer Fias mohammed parker Fias by yes, our yes, yes. <laughs> yes yes from uh we, we met in dubai yes, yes nice my regards to him as well and uh, shaista from london he's saying uh hello to Gucci. Hello to you too, yeah. Nice. Very nice yeah. to see everyone uh, there. And people want to know something more about Gucci. Can always visit his website, gucharan.com, yes. right? Yeah, gucharanrupra.com. Uh, gucharanrupra.com. Gucharanrupra.com, yeah. Yeah. And we have one question. Is the balloon more comfortable than chopper? absolutely <laughs> if you are of the faint hearted and you get a lot <laughs> of uh, uh should i say um when you go up on a helicopter oh, sorry on a uh, if you get air sick helicopter is not for you yeah if yeah. you can take med if you can take the tablets and then try after <laughs> why not but the only trouble if if you want to compare the two is on the balloon you get one chance and if the animal moves out of line you're missing it. Whereas on the helicopter, you've got the opportunity to say, I didn't get my shot. We want, can we please go back? And we go back and we fly over again to get that shot. And uh, we keep doing it until you're satisfied or until the pilot says, look, I'm bored of this. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah. But with the helicopter, you can keep going back and forth. Whereas with the balloon, you're, you're very stuck to uh, your direction and which way you're going. Yeah, whereas on the helicopter, you've got the freedom to do exactly as you wish. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Peter, Peter Hudson. Our hey, Peter. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, nice to shooting, hear from him. <laughs> shooting like this is such fun and Gucci is the master. He's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, he, 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 he. So w one day I was supposed to be traveling on the chopper and we were supposed to do two trips. But because of a delayed flight, we end up doing one trip. 
and on the trip was i'll not mention but peter was on it so peter this is not going this is not going to sound good in a short one <laughs> but the the pilot lifted the chopper up like 2 feet from the ground <laughs> put it back down says good your lunch was too heavy get out here yeah. <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thrown out of the chopper. And Peter, you went on that chopper, yeah. So I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Peter is saying, uh, I like hikey images, interesting and artistic. Although I find judges and others don't like them very much. Yes, yes, um, for sure. Uh, I, I I understand what you mean. Um, my view is i'm doing this not for competitions i'm doing this for fulfilling my internal fire or i'm enjoying fulfilling this fire by going out there taking photography i i love the uh, loki i love high key uh, seems like i don't know how to take color photos anymore <laughs> yeah so but uh, we're trying we're still trying <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. on 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 the positive i think um if you look at all my photos this is probably the most color photos you've seen being aerial yeah because in aerial you really need the colors to support yeah. with the the shapes and you know the the canvas is very flat so you need the colors to try and break it down whereas on uh, normal photography i love my black and white and i'll keep pushing black and white as much as i can yeah and shreya is asking how do you get such sharp shots while the helicopter is moving doesn't the vibration affect it i i use nikon shreya yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know she's a canon user <laughs> a bully bully only bully yeah only bully yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh Sh shreya it's about um i i think the major part is the higher shutter speed yeah uh lower shutter speeds will obviously give you a bit of fuzziness it's the higher shutter speed if you notice that most of the shots were 1000 upwards unless i'm trying to be creative and trying to do something different then i'll drop it down but usually i'm shooting at a 1000 shutter speed or upwards um if you're going for a longer lens maybe you want to try a 400 mm out um yes you can and maybe you'd probably need to run on an even higher shutter speed on that uh, a, a big issue with big lenses on the helicopter is cuz the helicopter is so small it's a four seater robinson we take the doors off so it's open to drafts it's open to all the wind blowing um the 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 most is when you're trying to take your 400 mm and it kind of pops out of the chopper when you're trying to do that the draft from the blades just keeps pushing it down it just you know you're constantly trying to fight that lens to hold it up hey it works it's down to you trying something different and if it works fine and if it doesn't work you know what it is but for sure when i'm up on a helicopter uh when it doesn't work it's a very expensive doesn't work yeah <laughs> so we want to try and make sure we'll do the workshop you know you can try and bracket the shot or we can try and you can try and take a couple on high shutter speed try and take a couple on low shutter speed just to try and make sure you've tried you've tried and you know what you've got but preferably i'd recommend 1000 upwards or faster yeah <laughs> So basically the first thing you have to do is you need to go and buy a Nikon camera. <laughs> <laughs> I I know exactly where to get one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, We're we enjoying next... that Shreya but obviously it's only a joke. Yeah. She's serious, saying yeah. Canon all the way. <laughs> <laughs> There you go out. Throw out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, only joking. It's all. Yeah. Uh, you you know uh just uh, to try and save myself from all the batter later on yeah uh, um the, the the realistic factor is it's this and this and that yeah it's not about what you've got in your hand it doesn't matter if you've got an iphone or if you've got an ipad or you've got it, it's it's all down to you seeing the shot and taking it at the right moment so it doesn't matter you're using a nikon doesn't matter using a canon doesn't matter using a sony doesn't matter using a pentax whatever you want even a fuji you know they're all amazing cameras 
the only thing that's different about is one's function is that way, another one's function is something else. So, you know, um, what I have learned is that when you go and use pro camera bodies or you use more expensive D6s, D850s, Z7s, the room for error is bigger. Whereas when you're using some of the consumer cameras, you know, maybe D Z50, uh, maybe D5600 uh, or the 5000 series, 5000, uh, 7000 or the 3000 series, that the room for error is small. When you make a mistake on settings with those sort of cameras, it will teach you a lesson and you will fail. But when yeah. you come into the pro cameras and you're shooting in raw, you can get it wrong, but you can still come and recover it somehow or the other. You know, you can still find a way. It'll be very, very rare. Or yes, surely there are places where you've got it wrong, but the chances of recovery of the photo are so much more greater than recovery on a consumer camera when you get it wrong there. So yes, uh, is it worth buying an expensive camera? absolutely the functionality and that recovery factor is massive and the bigger part is getting proper glass if you can mm. get fast uh f 2.8 lenses they'll give you super super sharp photos and details that you didn't believe you could get um, i used to have an old d50 which was my first slr uh, I, I did a trip with a friend to Samburu and I put on my 70 to 200 f2.8 on it and I said, here, you have some fun. I was still on my, at that point, D4 with my 200, 400. We came back to the lodge and we were looking at the shots the D50 gave with the 70 to 200 f2.8 lens. And they were beautiful. The <laughs> details were wow, not as wow as the D4 for sure, yeah. but the details were still beautiful. So it shows how important glass is. And I yeah. know a lot of us cut corners. We like to buy or we, we look at a 204 or no, what's the current one? The 180, 400. 180, 400. With, and I know it's a $12,000 lens. And then you go and look at a Sigma 150, 600 right. and you say look it's not 600 yeah the 150 600 or something yeah yeah think, and yeah I'm on, I'm yeah on i think so I, I, yeah. to be honest i'm not a i'm, I'm not <laughs> sure but not saying anything bad to sigma it is the price difference is significantly lower by a lot yeah. but then when you start putting that into wildlife photography and low light you then understand why the 180 400 is so expensive yeah. yeah, and you know, it's you can go and buy a D6 and then put the 150 600, and your shots will still not be wow, they'll be good, but they won't be wow. But you go and put a proper Nikon 400 2.8, uh, even a 180 400 on that D6 body, and look at the magic it'll do for you, it'll honestly give you magic back. And we both had the opportunity because I think uh, the D6 that I had came from you, Hamis. We yeah. both had the opportunity of testing that camera. Yes. And I was honestly blown away with the focus on that machine. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and we have a, a question from Fias. Have you tried Nikkor uh, 500 PF lens 5.6? No, I, I haven't. Yeah. If you're willing to give me one, I don't mind trying it. <laughs> <laughs> we, in 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 uh, Dubai, we are not uh, getting it for even for testing. Every time I check with them, it's out. It's, it's I don't know who is taking it. <laughs> it's it's so light. Um, I, I met a photographer who had it, and we did a game drive together. It's so 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 light, and the shots are super sharp as well. But it, it's um. It's it's just so easy to carry, and you know you look at a five hundred f four, and it's yeah. it weighs a ton, and then you look at a five hundred five point six, and you're like, really, yeah, <laughs> uh, and you know it's what twenty three centimeters without the cap, you know, it's literally yeah. just that that tall, yeah, that long, and you're thinking, and it does get good shots. No, I haven't tested it, 
Um, one day I will probably get the opportunity to test it uh, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. I've seen good shots out of it, to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, what are the benefits of helicopter over drones? Uh, more control over settings. Uh, on the drone you have as well. Um, the trouble with a drone is the quality of the image coming out of the drones. Uh, it hasn't reached a Z7. It hasn't reached a D850. It hasn't reached a D5. Maybe mm. one day when they do get to that point, then it's really worth considering a drone. But until or unless you get to that sort of level with a drone, it's not. Unless you pick up one of those drones with eight fans on them and uh, eight mm. propellers and it can pick up an SLR, then yes, it'll be worth it. Yeah. Uh, our law with drones is much more complicated than our law with helicopters, just because that I don't own the helicopter and I don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure the guys who have the helicopter have the issues to deal with. But, you know, it's so much in value, you don't mind dealing with those issues. But at the moment in Kenya, our law with drones is too complicated. The expense of running a drone license is as much as running a pilot license nearly. Uh -huh. So it still makes helicopters cheaper in some <laughs> sense or the other. And not forgetting the quality coming out of a drone hasn't arrived. Uh, we can probably be having this conversation 10 years later and the quality coming out of a drone will be amazing. And I guarantee you, I will try it. Yeah, yeah. I, I and... did have a Mavic. I had, I did have a Phantom, but I've got rid of all of them because I'm not. You, you know, I, I edit on a 27 inch iMac. When I mm -hmm. come here and I stick the drone shot on the screen and I look at all the other shots I took, it that magic isn't there. Yeah, yeah. and I don't feel I've received, and I don't feel I'm doing justice to the shot. So I, I don't. And you know, this is a hobby. It's about quality for me. Yeah, if I did, if it wasn't about quality for me, I would have been putting my watermark right across the photo. Good turn, <laughs> Rupra, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, do you shoot in helicopter with the windows open? We, we shoot without the doors. We take the doors <laughs> off. We leave them at the camp or wherever. <laughs> yeah, we, we take the doors off. So, yes, we completely... Um, my beard flies off, so uh, we, we make sure. No, but depends where you sit on the helicopter. Uh, there's so much draft that then starts to go through that um, you, you then have to end up with... Um, you can't even have conversations on it. So sometimes we struggle to even discuss with each other what's going on. So sometimes, you know, we'll be sort of saying, okay, I'm coming on to the intercom. Uh, we have lions that have been seen on the other side, and we have a crossing happening on this side. Which way do you want? Number one for lion, number two for crossing. Yeah, and then the guy goes, "Okay, number two, number two." Yeah, <laughs> all sign sign language. The sign language. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, it, it is, and then obviously we can slow down the chopper, but that still doesn't stop the draft because it's coming from the fan. Yeah. yeah. But and how? Yeah. Go on, go on, go on. Tell me. No, no, finish. Let's... Okay, so then I said, but the best part about a helicopter compared to a drone is the adrenaline charge that goes through your body flying in a helicopter. It's so much fun, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And how much is the post-production role involved when it comes to aerial photography? So, so how much does the post-production role, role in oh. role of post-production, post-processing? Uh, Post-processing, uh, if you underexpose the shots, uh, to be honest with you, not really much. Um, usually you'll remove shadows and reduce highlights. But when you're doing post-processing for a helicopter, you'll do the opposite. Yeah, you'll increase, you know, you want darker and brighter because it then gives more shapes yeah. and it gives you more differences in it. But... Um, no, I don't think it's much more. I mean, you can start going into Photoshop and try putting layers and layers on top, which obviously you can decide to spend four or five hours on an image if you want to. But normally I spend 30 seconds to five minutes on an image maximum. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that be it. You know, obviously yeah. over time speed has become important, but you, you know the effort of sometimes trying to change photos, add clouds, try to do this. I know Photoshop has made it a lot easier because they've done that sky thing now. Yeah, I've never tried it by the way, but the the the, the best way is get the shot right the first time, or take two or three shots, bracket them, and put them together. That's about it. Otherwise, post production, maybe just, you know, enhance the colors slightly, reduce or increase the shadows, uh, play around with the highlights, maybe a bit of dehaze, stuff like that. That's about it. I, I don't really want to do too much more than that. Yeah. And what is the best time of the day to shoot, uh, go for helicopter shoots? And how do you control the light? Uh, being wildlife photographers, uh, controlling the light, let's not even go there. We have zero control over it. Uh, <laughs> very recently, I was asked to arrange a chopper trip for when it's a stormy, gloomy day. How can I plan for that? Nothing here. Yeah. So we just have to do the best we can or assume that your luck will bring everything. Uh, light, I would either do... Uh, if you're not fussed about shadows, yeah. then maybe even lunchtime is fine. You underexpose mm -hmm. your shots. Uh, if you're bothered about shadows, um, anything from 7 in the morning to 9, 9.30, and vice versa from 4 o'clock to 5.36 will be fine as well. Yeah, it's usual time, similar to a game drive. Um Shadows being the operative word, or whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, I, I was having a conversation with Jeffrey Wu, and we were discussing because we we're trying to do a lot of low-level photography together, mm -hmm. and we were discussing about helicopters. And he goes that he enjoys his helicopter photography between one to three p.m. He likes it oh. in harsh light, and his shots are phenomenal on uh, aerial photography but mm -hmm. you, you know what i mean it's it's personal preference and yeah. i totally, totally appreciate you can't go out there hiring a chopper for eight hours <laughs> and shoot all eight hours yeah uh, if you're ever going to do that please make sure you bring me <laughs> i'd love to do that yeah i'd love to have an eight hour budget on a helicopter yeah <laughs> We do morning, we do evening, we do lunchtime. We can get the chopper to sleep with us at some lodge or the other, and we do it the next day as well. Yeah, uh, and um, but I, I find the morning hour is very crisp. The evening hour is a bit more softer, and I'd go for the morning crisp hour. That's nice. The shots there are very nice. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, hope your luck takes you. Hope your luck gives yeah. you the light <laughs> that you need there. Yeah? Uh, Subhi Sridharan is asking, are there any conservancies that allow drone photography? Yes. you. Whenever you're traveling, wherever you're booking, just notify the conservancy in advance that, look, I want to come and take drone photography. I want to come and take uh, beetle cam, turtle cam, whatever you want to call it, type of photography as well. And they'll give you the nod, yes or no. And if they give you the no nod, it's your option to either go there or consider going elsewhere. So it's totally up to you. But yes, if you speak to the conservancies up in advance saying, look, this is what I want to do, uh, any objections, they'll be upfront with you as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, or they might also give you that factor saying, uh, it's not legally allowed, but we don't mind. Uh, as long as you don't start putting it all over social media saying we, we do this or we don't do this, yeah? And they'll al most of them will allow it. No problem. Okay. Yeah. And for sure, you know, the parks don't allow it. So yeah. you can't do it in a park, but conservancies, yes. Uh, it's down to the conservancy owners if they want to allow it. So just speak to the guys. They're happy to. Uh, you, you know, when you're open and honest with the guys, look, this is what I want to do. Uh, some might ask you to sign an indemnity. <laughs> I've signed indemnities. If a rhino kills me, it's my problem. <laughs> yeah, it's not the conservancy's problem. But hey, at the end of the day, these are animals whose 
self-preservation is also important. There's no way a rhino will attack you. Black rhino is a different matter entirely, but there's no way a white rhino or something will intentionally attack you with the intent to kill. It will only attack you if it feels threatened. So as long as you don't threaten the animals, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And he got one more question. Are there any video clippings of your aerial photography? Yes. If you go onto my website, um, do you, uh, let me I'll, just I'll, check. Uh, yeah. If you just go to gucharanrupra.com. Let me, I'm searching for my website. Yeah. <laughs> so on, on uh, hold on. Sorry, have you done this? Uh, let me go on a different browser. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. And then when I do a screen share, you can see it together. Okay. I'm just opening. Yeah, maybe. And video. So, um, yeah, here we go. Yeah, you've done the screenshot. Thank you very much. Yeah, so yeah. He, he has a video we did for the Z7 pre-production, and that does have, yeah. C can you hear the sound can come through? Yeah. Yeah. Today I'm testing the new mirrorless Nikon Z7 and the S series lenses. So to, towards the end of this, there's some clips of, uh, I'll try and jump across. Yeah. Oops, sorry. I also got to test it on period shots and I was blown away by its performance. Seven point five megapixels and sure that I can miss any detail. And also allowed me to find you the composition. So that that's one of them. There's not so much more. Yeah, but um, there is a D6 video, there is a Z7 pre-production video, which is what we just saw. Uh, the D6 yeah. doesn't really have much to do with Arial. Um, I've, I I've uh, shared the website details in the comment so that everyone... Thank, thank you very much. It. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. Good fun. Good fun yes, party. Yes, this is yes. our party. This is. This, I think this is our livelihood in one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we started this initiative. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't only do aerial photography, I do other types of photography as well. You know? <laughs> but this is something you, you know, the initial start of all this was um, for my 40th birthday, I decided to get myself an aerial tour of Kenya, and it was traveling from Nairobi to Masai Mara. We spent two nights in Masai Mara, including an aerial tour. And then from Masai Mara, we flew across to Lake Magadi. We spent uh, an hour flying over Magadi. From where we went across to Amboseli, we spent uh, half an hour flying over Amboseli. And then we were flying back to Nairobi. So that, that was like a, the triangular tour that I was doing for my 40th. And uh, thanks to the availability of the helicopter, I had to uh, 
delay my birthday by a week. Yeah? <laughs> so, so, I'm, so I'm a week younger now. Yeah. So you also revealed that you crossed forty. Uh, and that was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you not seen the white now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and th that was my first trip, and the experience of that first trip was so amazing that now I've racked maybe around 50, 60 hours on helicopter flights, just photographing and stuff. So, And when you start looking at the cost per hour, it is a heavy cost, but it's the adrenaline charge it's such a beautiful experience and yes it is tough photographing from a helicopter um, i had a couple of friends who wanted to just experience a helicopter and i was like um you guys go experience like, no 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 good why don't you come and take photographs and we'll experience you flying or we'll do the f we will do the experiencing you carry on photographing and we did that and you know the guy was like, um, I know him since I was a very young kid, and he mm -hmm. goes to me and he goes, Gooch, I always had respect for all your photos, but now seeing what you do from a helicopter, I have the utmost of respect for you now because it is crazy, you know, when you're trying to bank left and drop it this way so you can get a very vertical shot and you're trying to, when you start doing all your loops to try and get to the same place over and over, uh, it, it does really get, you know, that sort of low gravity, it drops you down and then you fly off again and then you slow down and then you kick it up again. You <laughs> you, you, you feel it in your stomach and I'm not yeah. a guy who gets air sick, but when you push it and push it, you actually do start beginning to feel it. Yeah, but it's an amazing experience. It's definitely worth doing. And if any of you guys want to do it, I'll be more than happy to find a way to make it work for all of us. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. saying he'll be joining in next November. Done deal. Done <laughs> deal. Yeah. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> yeah. And the wow. beautiful part about the helicopter is uh, two hours you need and it's yeah. done and dusted. Uh, it's It flies from a private helipad, so we don't have to sit and wait for air traffic control to say, okay, uh, you guys, uh, you'll be leaving, you, you get this opportunity so the helicopter is not just running and waiting and we're not losing hours sitting and waiting. It's yeah. from a private helipad and we fly back to a private helipad as well. So uh, you get the most out of your money for it. That's what I'd like. That's yeah. the best way of looking at it. Yeah. Great. I yeah. think we have covered all the questions and super. Messages. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So thank you. Much. Always. Uh, a, very interesting always. Yeah, always a pleasure. Yeah, Nisha's gone for dinner now, or she's um, disappeared maybe. completely. <laughs> I, I I messaged her. I didn't get any response. I think <laughs> <laughs> she's just busy eating. I know she hasn't messaged me either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll find out. Yeah, she's probably yes. embarrassed about her black photos. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll watch this again and she'll catch me when I'm in the Mara. Yeah? So, you know, those plans of us meeting in the Mara, let's just reschedule. Yeah? I'll meet you across the river. Yeah, I'll, I'll meet you on the other side of the Mara River. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Super again. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing to always work with you guys. Yeah, and the journey has been beautiful. We started this journey many years ago, and thank yes. you, thank you so much. Thank, uh, thank, you, thank you to you. everybody who asked questions, and thank yeah. you for everyone for watching. Appreciate. Thank it. you, everybody. We'll meet yeah. on another session soon. Good, you need to prepare something for. <laughs> you let me know what you want. We'll sort it out. No problem at all. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no problem at all. We'll sort it. Yeah. yeah. So everyone, take care of your health. We'll leave now. Bye. Thank you. Okay, bye. Okay.